Let's check out. This is still part of the chapter about work 7.6. This chapter will take time when you do homework, which is due tonight. The previous chapter is okay, but this one is time consuming because you have to use your creativity and imagination since this is the last chapter in the whole chapter of applications of integrals. So we're accumulating all the knowledge we just gained, area between graphs, volumes, slicing, imagining work, gravity, what is work and force and distance, all that kind of stuff. This example is more interesting than the one we had before by this particular uh, reason. Before we had a cylindrical tank, so it made sense to put it on the floor and then it grows up. But actually I could always change that, to be honest, I could put x-axis here at the top and then the cylindrical tank goes down and so on. There's lots of options to do it. Your mass have to be correct because then the shift happens. If you indicate the shift correctly, the answer will be the same. So here, let's practice this idea as well. It is a tank show below. I can put it on the floor if I want, then it grows up. But for this specific time, I want to show you what's going to happen if I imagine it's a pool. And if it's a pool, I want this line at the top of the pool to be x-axis. How about that? And then in the middle, I will do y-axis. Now the tank is growing down. It's minus something, something um, height. So when you, when you say my pool is five foot deep, five foot, that's a lot. Okay, whatever. Five foot deep, then it means it's minus five height, right? So that's gonna, what's gonna happen here. And then we're going to have zero over here. Let's try to figure it out. As always, we want to check the slice. Before we're making a slice, let's see the projection from the front or from the back, from the third dimension. Projection from the third dimension looks like so. This is my x-axis, this is my y-axis, and the projection will be a hemicircle. A hemicircle, which looks like this. Hemicircle means half of the circle, right? So it would be a perfect sphere, but it's not. What did they give us? They kind of gave us nothing, really, except the radius. Uh, radius is given on the picture, but nothing else is given. No other dimensions. So they assume that's enough. Okay, fine. Let's try to figure out that it is enough. This is five. So I can see that my shape is located from minus five to five on the x-axis. And then since they said that it is a hemisphere, hemisphere means it's a half of the perfect sphere, right? Then the depth should also be five. So this is also five. On the y-axis, the coordinate will be minus five as well, y-axis. Now we're choosing the method, we're gonna do dy, since it looks like rotation about y-axis. And in general, in all of those problems, we're choosing dy, but again, you can be actually more creative and don't do that if you want something different. So volume, but we're not talking about volume, we're actually talking about work. Work will be, last time we figured out it's g, uh, Integral, it makes sense, but then it's g times rho. Oh, that's not rho. Rho. Uh, that is gravitational force. Oh, that's what I'm like, what's wrong? g times rho. Gravitational forces and uh, density of the liquid. Don't write it down, because it's not there. Did you notice they say it's how heavy it is? This rho times g gives you this weight. Weight is literally density and the gravity that pushes it away. Unless, of course, the pool is located somewhere very high in the elevation or in the space. That will be different. But in general, we're taking very classical numbers with very standard, simple idea that it's on the ground. Physics book explained more in details. Since I'm not very interested in that, I just assume physicists are right, and that's going to be the number here, the weight. The weight comes as 62.5 instead of rho times g. Pounds per foot cubed, feet, feet cube or foot cube. So that is the first thing. Now the idea here, we're gonna make a slice and see how the slice looks like. Let's make it in the red. The slice looks like a disc, see? It's not even a washer this time. 
Well, uh, it's full. So we were talking about a slice of water, not a slice of the pool. Here's a sample, sample slice. It's not always a circle. The problem I'm skipping, but I do have video on this problem, is this shape. Slice is now a rectangle. Check this out. It's not even a square. And you'll have to figure out that. So problems are different. And you will have to figure out different. And this shape came from the parabola. Check this out, which sounds pretty awesome. So in this case, it's again a disk. But we don't have any dimensions here to use it as pi r squared. So we'll have to figure out the radius. The radius is not 5. Because radius is different depending on the height. This is very important to understand. The highest point gives you radius 5. Uh, let's call it capital R. Somewhere lower, it's not 5 anymore. Lower, it's not 5. Lower, it's smaller than 5. At the very bottom, it's 0. Radius is 0. So somewhere close to the bottom, it's going to be 0 0.2. So the radius is changing. Then it should be some variable. Let's call this variable x. So let's call radius as x. And that's what they have it here. Radius is called x. Okay, fine. If we know that radius is x, what is going to be area of the slice? Pi r squared, exactly. Pi r squared, and now we can change it to what? Pi x squared. So it looks amazing. We can put pi x squared here. And then, uh, let me probably write down the formula. And I'm doing something interesting, you probably noticed. Um, we're going to have area, well, that's fat, area times, what was the other one? D, what is D? The, the distance we're lifting, dy. So this is going to be the shape of the integral. Now we'll have, to, I know, I don't know why it's so huge. Probably I was showing something very important in my last class. Now we have to figure out actually how it looks nicely. So let's do 62.5 and discuss what is missing. The y coordinates are missing. So let's call it from A to B. It's from C to D, but it doesn't matter. You just see that it is going to be height. So let's put everything that is missing. What is the height here? Before I explained to you that this is where the books are not consistent. So in this class, I'm following the standard that the height, let me show you the graph before. That helped me to remember it better. But I'm showing, I'm following the standard from the previous integral. The height of um, the previous example was from 0 to 6, even though the height of the tank was 10. So I'm following the idea that A and B are the height of the water or liquid given. Because that's what we're lifting. So how much Y have to be lifted? How much all of this heavy stuff should be lifted? From 0 to 6 in the previous example. How about my uh, current example? What do you think? Negative 5, 0. Exactly. We're lifting it from the level negative 5 up to 0. Thank you. And there's no fountain. And there's no fountain. Last time we had a fountain. Minus 5 to 0. Good job. Now, area is pi x squared. So let me write it down, and then we'll see if we like it or not. And then d. d is the elevation of the water. So I explained it to you last time. The elevation is keep changing. The piece at the bottom has to travel the most. Here's a sample disk at the bottom. The piece at the top doesn't travel anything. It travels zero. So it's a shift. The shift. Oops. The shift of how much the water is traveling will be from the highest level minus the smallest level. What's the highest level? Zero. What's the lowest level? What do you think? Negative five, five. Let's decide on that. Oh, five, negative five. Any other ideas? Remember, it's not supposed to be a number, actually. It's supposed to be a function because the height depends on the location of my dot. So if I put y over here, then it almost doesn't travel anything. If I put my y at the bottom, it travels a lot. If I put it at the y at the very bottom, it travels the most. 
So I'm traveling every time Y distance. And now the shift happens. So zero minus Y. That's the hard thing to understand. So definitely ask me about this. The hard thing to understand is this shift idea. But it makes sense if you plug some numbers. First of all, I see that the, uh, the large number goes minus small, and y is always smaller, so it goes second. So large is going to be 5. Uh, large will be height, and we agree that it will be 0. The smallest one will be this y. y will be ranging from minus 5 and 0. So it makes sense. If y is minus 5, minus minus gives you plus 5. Now it's going to be times 5. 5 height will be lifted up. Then we're going to go to the very up. When y is 0, then there's nothing to lift. It's already at the very top. So 0 minus 0 is 0. That is how the idea works here. So again, let me repeat this phrase. So concentrate if you fall asleep. That's interesting and kind of important. 0 minus y, because y is ranging from minus 5. Don't do that. From minus 5 to 0. At minus 5, it will be 0 minus minus 5, which is just 5. That it means it's going to have to grow up, lift up by 5 units, right? Because lifting distance is not negative. So it's distance to lift. Let me do that. Distance to lift. So the very bottom one will be the highest distance to lift. And then 0 will be the highest point. So if I plug 0 minus 0, it gives you 0, no distance to lift. You can even scoop it with your um, cup outside of the pool. Anywhere between maybe like minus 3.7, then you plug 0 minus 3 point, minus minus 3.7, becomes plus 3.7. Then I'm lifting 3.7. Make sense? That kind of makes sense, I think, when it's been explained. But it's hard to make it set it up by yourself. Let me uh, get questions, and then I will ask you if you agree with everything in the formula. Questions? G. Oh, so rho and G. Let me repeat it again. There'll be, there was rho and G in our previous examples and even in the formula. That's a good question. Let me say it again. Here it is. This co combo or this product represents the weight of the liquid we're pushing. This is the weight. So if weight is given, you don't need it. Weight here represented as density times the, gravi the gravity. And some physics students ask me if that's correct. Like, well, you're asking the wrong person about that. Go to your physics book and check it. I'm trusting the book, because that's what I do. And I can answer the math questions. But uh, if the book tells me this is weight, I'm not arguing that. So definitely check the physics books about this. But I think it makes sense. Density makes it heavy. Gravity pushes it down. So interaction of density with gravity is product. It kind of makes sense to me. So this time we just plug the number which they gave us. It says it is heavy, 62.5 pounds per foot cube heavy instead of rho and g. Thank you. That was a good question. Any more questions? Yes. That was my second question. Is do we agree with anything with everything here? What are you saying? Just repeat. Um, <laughs> There's an x and y in the same integral. We're gonna learn it's only in calculus three, which is called multivariable calculus for a reason. Why we have x in the integral? Yes. So let's try to fix that problem. Why I wrote it down as a, but actually should be a of y. So that is not correct. It was the very na natural idea to put pi r squared. The moment we agree r is x, it's pi x squared. But it's not in terms of y. We're supposed to have x equals blah, blah, blah. So now we have to find this equation for x squared, or specifically for x, or for x squared, doesn't matter. So cross it off and let's work on this. Area is pi r squared. We agreed to call it pi x squared, but this area is written in terms of x. 
we need to switch the variable somehow. So let's discuss that. Do you see any connection between x and y? Oh, it shifted my graphs. Well, that's rude. Do you see any connection between x and y from the shape of the slice? It's like the most complicated shape you can imagine. Just a second. It's a circle. Do you remember any connections between x and y? Maybe I'll guess it back. X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. Remember that? It's classics. Classics. Okay, now one graph is ugly. I will fix it later. So, it's a circle. Let me make it a beautiful circle. It's a beautiful circle. See? We denoted the radius to be X. And we put the circle on X axis with a center at zero and y axis. And the center is zero, so the center of the radius is zero, zero. The width to the right and to the left is x, the height up and down is y, classic. So what is the connection between x and y then? x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now, x is r if r is fixed. And we don't like that because now we want to include not just the slice uh, that we chose, not the sample slice. We want to include all of them. That's why also it was kind of a sketchy idea here that we assumed that R is always 5. No, R is keep changing, right? Now let's solve for X from this equation and we better have a function. It's not supposed to be a finite number. So x equals r squared minus y squared and the square root r is given as 5. I, I left it as a formula on purpose in case you have different numbers. Now you can do your homework with this formula instead. And we need pi x squared, remember? So it's going to be x equals the square root. What do you think I should put here? 25. Let's put 5 squared minus y squared, thank you. Finally, a of y equals area of a sample slice, depending on x location will be pi x squared, where x is, and let me write down nicely. I will still leave the square root, even though it conveniently cancels out, but I want you to have good notes. Five squared minus y squared squared pi r squared, where r is x, and it's changing. It's not the fixed r. It's the changing r. So this time r is a function, as you understand. Here's my point to explain why I am keep mentioning those two things. This r, maybe let's change it to small r. r is given as a constant 5, but this capital R is a function of x. That is my point here. Yeah. So we're choosing one radius to be keep changing the capital one, but then we are giving one radius, which is the biggest one, that's five. That's kind of the idea here. And we use it to plug into the equation. Now we have the area. Finally, we can build the integral and finish integration if we want to. Who's, who's yawning? It's so wrong. Do you know how contagious it is? Equals integral from minus 5 to 0. 62.5. That was the heaviness of each slice. The heaviness of each slice. Pi r squared. And I will still keep it as a square root. 5 squared minus y squared. And then I'm squaring it. That's pi r squared. Close the parentheses. And then, how much should I lift? Zero minus y. Dy. That's a lift. What kind of lift? Liquid lift. Whatever the liquid is. And y is running from minus 5 to 0. That's the location of the water. Since the pool is full, then uh, it's from minus 5 to 0. If the pool was not full, it will be from minus 5 to minus 1, for example. Or whatever is fullness of the pool. And again, you see the negative number? 
it's not supposed to scare you because it math will figure it out actually so it's the answer should not be negative math will figure it out at some point and the answer should be positive it's a warp and i'm not going to solve the integral the most important part here is to build it and usually on the tests we ask you multiple choice questions and we give you five integrals and you have to choose one of those that represents the work for the given problem.